Welcome to Corning Optical Fiber's e-briefing on why loss matters in optical networks. I'm Chris Towery, Product Line Manager, High Data Rate Optical Fibers. Today I'll be providing an overview of our fibers that are designed to support the high-speed, high-capacity, long-haul, regional, and access telecommunications networks of today and tomorrow. As the presentation continues, you can pause, skip, or repeat slides by using the navigation buttons at the bottom of your screen. Signal loss, or attenuation, is the centerpiece of Corning's latest product innovations for high data rate fibers because it's integral to the three key customer concerns of performance, speed, and cost. By decreasing attenuation, we can improve optical signal-to-noise ratio, which can increase the reach of fiber links as well as enable higher bit rates. In addition to leading the industry in lowering fiber loss, we maintain compliance to the international standards that govern the largest percentage of fibers deployed today. Corning customers can be confident that our low-loss fibers in that they comply with either the ITU-T G.652 or the ITU G.655 standards categories. The ever-increasing global demand for bandwidth can only be cost-effectively satisfied with technically advanced high-capacity optical fiber. Corning is leading the response with two fibers optimized for long-haul networks, Leaf Fiber and SMF28 Ultra Low Loss Fiber, or ULL. I will be explaining the attributes and benefits of both fibers in the following slides. Before I do that, it is important to understand that by definition, fibers used in long-haul and regional networks extend over great distances. Corning's advanced low-loss technology enables LEAF and SMF28 ULL fibers to support longer spans, improve signal quality, and provide more operating margin than older generation or legacy fibers. As a result, they can enable network deployments that require fewer amplifiers and regeneration sites, and that translates into real equipment cost and operational savings for network carriers. In addition, both fibers are fully compliant with industry standards, backwards compatible with existing fibers you can have in your network, and designed to support emerging system requirements of 10G and 40G and beyond. Let's take a closer look at Corning Leaf Fiber. Leaf fiber brings the benefits of a large effective area and moderate chromatic dispersion together to enable lower cost, better performing optical networks. On the right side of your screen, you can see the data highlighting Leaf's industry leading specifications. This includes the largest effective area of any G.655 fiber on the market today, as well as the moderate chromatic dispersion values across the 15-15 nanometer operating region. Additionally, leaf fiber has the lowest polarization mode dispersion or PMD values. These features enable leaf fiber to provide the network flexibility needed to cost effectively meet the bandwidth needs of today's high speed optical systems. More than 30 million kilometers of leaf fiber have been deployed on six continents in the past 14 years, a testament to this product's versatility and performance. The primary benefit of an ITU G.655 fiber, such as leaf fiber, is its ability to reduce the dispersion compensation and amplification cost associated with operating at 10 and 40 gigabits per second. This illustration shows a typical long-haul network route operating at 10 or 40 gigabits per second with 80 to 100 kilometer spans connected to a transmitter on the left and a receiver on the right. At 10 gigabits per second, most optical receivers will tolerate an accumulation of between 1,000 and 1,600 picoseconds per nanometer of chromatic dispersion before dispersion compensation is required. In a typical G.652 or standard single mode fiber network, this is achieved by using dispersion slope compensation modules or DSCMs. Usually, a DSCM is made up of a coil of specialized optical fiber with negative dispersion that is placed in a module and rack mounted next to an optical amplifier. A rough rule of thumb is that for every 5 kilometers of transmission fiber, 1 kilometer of dispersion compensation fiber is needed. This DC fiber tends to have high signal loss and results in the DSCM requiring additional amplification stages achieved by using erbium doped fiber amplifiers. These are depicted by the right pointing blue triangles in the diagram. The graph below the diagram is commonly referred to as a dispersion map. It shows how much chromatic dispersion a pulse of a particular wavelength accumulates as it propagates down the optical fiber route. When the pulse reaches the DSCM, the chromatic dispersion is nominally returned to zero. By comparison with leaf fiber and its moderate chromatic dispersion characteristics, it is possible to go four times as far before a network operator would be required to use a DSCM. 
And if a DSCM is not needed, a less expensive single-stage EDFA can be deployed, eliminating more costly, power-hungry EDFAs. The reduction in DSCMs and dual-stage EDFAs translates into significant cost savings for network operators using leaf fiber. The chart on this slide shows a comparison of Corning leaf fiber versus three leading competitor products. As you can see, leaf fiber has the lowest attenuation at the primary operating wavelength of 1550 nanometers of 0 0.20 dB per kilometer, a measure of 0 0.02 dB per kilometer better than the nearest competitor. While this may seem like a small number, over a 100 kilometer span, this adds up to 2 dB, and this differential delivers 60% more optical systems reach. Leaf fiber has the largest effective area, which in simple terms means that you can launch more power into the fiber. The combination of low attenuation and large effective area provides the carrier improved operations over longer distance with less distortion due to nonlinear impairments. In summary, leaf fiber is the world's most widely deployed non-zero dispersion shifted fiber with 30 million kilometers being sold. Because it requires fewer dispersion compensation modules, it delivers meaningful equipment and operational cost savings to network operators. With the lowest attenuation at 1550 nanometers of any ITU G.655 fiber, moderate dispersion, and large effective area, Leaf Fiber continues to be the fiber of choice for today's high data rate, long haul, and regional networks. Now let's take a look at Corning's SMF28 ULL fiber. Corning SMF28 ULL fiber has the lowest loss of any terrestrial fiber available. This advanced fiber builds on Corning's industry-leading manufacturing and development expertise in making ultra-low attenuation fibers for the long-reach submarine systems, while still being fully compliant with the ITU G.652 standard that comprises over 90% of the fiber deployed in the world today. The ultra-low attenuation supports longer spans, longer system breach, and improves signal quality while still being fully backwards compatible with existing single-mode fibers. As a result, SMF28 ULL fiber requires fewer amplifiers and regeneration sites, which is a real cost savings, especially in areas of challenging terrain where power, security, and suitable building site locations are a concern. On the next slide, we'll explore these benefits in more detail. In this example, we are looking at a system that has a transmitter and a receiver at both ends, as well as wavelength division multiplexing on each fiber. It also has optical amplifiers and a regeneration hut where signals undergo 3R optical, electrical, optical, or OEO regeneration as they travel through the system. Because it enables longer spans without the need of regeneration huts, using Corning SMF28 ULL in a greenfield or a new system enables cost savings with regard to hut construction, land, transmission equipment, as well as operational expenditures. These savings can be significant as a typical amplifier site can cost up to $500,000 per site. Because SMF28 ULL fiber allows longer systems reach, fewer regen sites are needed, saving tens of millions of dollars in the case of a multi-channel 40 gigabit system. Corning's ultra-low loss technology brings ample benefits to brownfield or existing networks as well. Corning's SMF28 ULL is fully backward compatible and can be incorporated into any existing network. Adding this fiber will extend the distance between amplifiers and can eliminate expensive OEO switching. It also provides the ability to deploy more optical add drop multiplexers, and it can assist network builders with difficult spans. The third fiber I'd like to talk about has been newly introduced. Corning SMF28 E Plus LL Fiber is an extension of our flagship SMF28 E Plus Fiber product line. In this new fiber, we have maintained all the beneficial aspects of SMF28 E Plus Fiber, and we have reduced the attenuation to the lowest levels possible for a silica germania fiber. SMF28 E Plus LL Fiber builds on our enhanced manufacturing process to achieve these attenuation levels that can only be exceeded by Corning's SMF28 ULL Fiber that I've described a few moments ago. SMF28 E Plus LL Fiber is designed for use in all network applications, from access to ultra long haul, with industry leading attenuation and PMD specifications that are unequaled by our competitors' fibers. As you can see from this chart, Corning's SMF2080 Plus LL Fiber leads the competition in attenuation specifications. Also, this fiber has the lowest loss at the primary network operating wavelengths of 1310 nanometers and 1550 nanometers. In addition, SMF2080 Plus LL Fiber also has the lowest PMD by a substantial margin. 
These differentials represent tremendous advantages in longer systems reach, improved signal quality, better overall performance, and lower costs for our customers. Next generation optical fiber networks must have the capacity to support the transmission of voice, data, and video at 40 and 100 gigabit per second speeds over significant distances. Corning's innovation in lower attenuation and PMD specifications make SMF2080 plus LL fiber the G.652D fiber of choice because it delivers a lower total cost of ownership, or TCO, for network carriers. As I've indicated previously, Corning's low-loss technology extends reach and reduces regeneration cost. Equally important, our fiber provides greater system margin, enabling network builders to plan for extra capacity for future requirements, as well as avoid costly operational headaches. Cable repairs are inevitable in an optical fiber network. Many times, repairs are necessary when construction work cuts into a cable. When that happens, repairs must be made quickly, as a cut cable results in total signal loss. The damaged fiber must be removed, and a new segment must be spliced in. If this happens enough times, the entire cable link must be replaced. Corning's low-loss fiber, which has an attenuation of 0.18 dB per kilometer, can accommodate up to 20 repairs. By comparison, a competitive product has an attenuation of 0.21 dB per kilometer and can only withstand five repairs before the link has to be replaced. As the chart on the right shows, Corning's fiber can accommodate 15 more repairs, and that translates into savings for carriers as the installation of new cable will be appreciably delayed. Low-loss fiber also can have value for access networks. As this diagram shows, the standard fiber to the premise reach is 18 kilometers, which in most communities means that many subscribers who live on the outskirts of town cannot have fiber access. We often refer to these areas as not spots. However, if system carriers use Corning SMF2080 plus LL fiber in their network, their reach will be extended to 19.6 kilometers, which represents a 20% gain in coverage and an equal percentage increase in the potential number of subscribers. It goes without saying that more subscribers equals more revenues for carriers. Another benefit of using low-loss fiber in access networks is the reduced number of central offices, or COs, required to cover a population area. In this example, we are looking at 17 CO locations in a Midwestern U.S. city which were installed with copper in mind. The second graph shows what would happen if a passive optical network was used to cover the same area using standard fiber or low-loss fiber. This scenario assumes a limited straight-line distance of approximately 12 kilometers with standard fiber and a 10% further distance with low-loss fiber. As you can see, the low-loss approach would achieve more than 20% more coverage area. With a closer view of the fiber options, you can see that standard fiber would require 11 COs, while low-loss fiber would use just 9. As I've indicated throughout this presentation, when you reduce the equipment needed to support your system, you reduce your overall cost, and that is important to all Corning customers. In summary, Corning Optical Fiber is committed to leading the industry in all long-haul, regional, and access fiber categories. Our G.655 and G.652 fibers have the lowest attenuation and PMD of any fiber on the market today. As a result, our products offer greater reach, more margin, better signal quality, and lower cost than today's competitive products. Corning's customers can count on Leaf Fiber, SMF28 ULL Fiber, and SMF28 E Plus LL Fiber as leaders in their respective ITU categories. Our fibers provide the bandwidth capacity and speed required to adjust the challenges in today's and tomorrow's network applications, whether they are operating at 10, 40, or 100 gigabits per second, as they span distances across cities, countries, and continents. This ends this brief overview presentation on why loss matters. I hope it has provided you with a better understanding of low loss fiber and how it can help to save you money and improve operational efficiencies in your network applications. If you have further questions or require additional information, please contact us at the phone number or email address provided on the screen. Thank you for your time.